Hello and welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. It is 2023. The new year has arrived and today I'm with Blake Tallis. And Blake, how you doing? Good. How about you, Chris? You know, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's January. And actually, you know, as much doom and gloom as what was surrounding the ice situation in mid-December, that big, big push of cold air kind of straightened some things out. I mean, we're probably a little behind when it comes to ice, but... Uh, you know, I think that slush problem we were really worried about seems to have gone away. Yeah, it seems like it's fixing itself across a lot of places. You know, there's still areas that people are dealing with it, but at least in our neck of the woods, it seems like things are shaping up pretty well. Well, one of the things that almost all of us love, probably more than than really we should, is our smartphones. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about apps, useful apps for catching more fish, especially through the ice. And I think when it comes to fishing, um, you know, weather is pretty important. Uh, let's talk weather apps first. Tell us kind of about the probably the 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 biggest one and most popular one, Blake. Yeah, I mean the the biggest most popular one out there is obviously the Weather Channel. You know, weather.com. That's uh, it's a great tool. It's free. Um, you know, you have basically all the details you need to plan out a trip. You know, you know where the wind's coming from, uh, wind speed. If there's any precipitation planned, uh, the temperature, all those tools are great. Um, other things that come with there, obviously, sunrise and sunset, which is kind of important uh, if you want to make sure you're hitting those key windows. Um, and then if there is a front coming in, uh, things like having a radar are super helpful as well. Blake, I got to ask you, you know, now that I, I've pulled you up on the big screen, are you in a bait shop right now? <laughs> it's just in the, uh, the garage, yeah. Yeah, I knew you were in the garage, but I just want everybody to see yeah. just, just how much of a of a bait junkie you are. We're gonna pull you up full screen here again, just so yeah. people yeah, can this, see your wall there. This is nothing. Yeah, I, uh, maybe one of these times we'll do a tour of the full garage, but this is just <laughs> just the area right behind me here. So, all right, we talked Weather Channel. Uh, how about how about uh, Weather Underground? Tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean it, that's a very very similar app to obviously to the Weather Channel. Um, one of the the advantages I think that it has is um, barometric pressure readings, which is an advantage. Um, I think there is like a it can up to date like the the barometric pressure at a given time on the weather channel, but there's um, readings and trends that are part of that of weather underground, which that can be very helpful. I mean, there's times when um, <clears throat> there's a big swing in temperature, and you need to know that to plan out kind of that specific thing. The other weather app, I guess, um, you know, if you rely on maybe the weather channel over weather underground is the, simply the barometer app. I believe most phones these days now have a barometer uh, built in. So like a sensor so they can sense like the, the current air pressure. So that's super, super handy just to be able to get real time data versus, I mean, where you're specifically at might be slightly different than uh, the closest weather station. Wow, I did not know that. One thing I saw this weekend was a lot of people dropping their phones down the hole. I wonder what the barometric pressure is like at the bottom of the lake. Yeah, but it's probably different than above. Yeah. But if, if people they, want to know more about like how barometric pressure changes fishing, you can go back into our archives. I believe it was one of the first 10 episodes we did. It mm -hmm. was with Todd Heitkamp from uh, Dakota Angler, and it was a, just a, a podcast specifically on how uh, barometric pressure affects fishing why don't you just give us just a quick rundown on that Blake? um obviously like a, a big change in pressure that's going to affect overall how um the fishing activity level whether it's a, a rising barometer or a falling barometer um <clears throat> typically if, if you're looking for kind of a good steady bite you want a steady barometer that, that's definitely a good rule of thumb and then sometimes those changes obviously when you have like a, something like a big cold front coming in that's going to affect the bite. Um, maybe you have a warming trend. Sometimes that can um, make the bite better. And and temperature and pressure are, are related. Very good. Let's talk about mapping. I and mean, that's probably the thing that, that most people access. I mean, at least the way I roll when I'm fishing is I look outside and go, yeah, looks like it's sunny today. <laughs> they all look like it's snowing. I don't depend on a whole lot of, uh, of meteorologists for my weather. I just kind of get it real time by you're looking out the window or walking outside, but let's talk mapping. What are some of the, the mapping apps that, that you use or that you know of? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the the most uh, relevant one, the the one that people are using most often, I would say, is Navionics. Um, it's a fantastic tool. I mean, for the price, that there, there literally probably isn't a better app that you can have on your phone when it comes to fishing and specifically ice fishing. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you're in a boat, you're you have a map with you, but not every unit out there has a map built in. Um, obviously, there are ones out there. A lot of those do come with something like Navionics. But um, having that right on your phone is great. Um, I believe it's $14.99. It used to be, um, man, years ago it used to be basically nothing. But uh, now it's $14.99 a year, which is still, I mean, basically nothing uh, for everything that you're getting in that. Um, and it has maps for tons and tons of lakes across the U.S. And I believe, I think it was, like I said, $14.99 for the U.S. And then it's a little over $20 if you're getting the U.S. and Canada maps. And they're great for you know, when you're on the water, great for planning out a day on the ice. Like, you know, kind of where you're going to go, what you're targeting. You can get some spots in mind before you even get to the water. Right. Like you said, that's probably the best $15 you'll ever spend as, as, a, as an angler. And, you know, one of the things we hear, you know, you'll see posts online. Hey, I'm thinking about getting a mapping app. Which one should I pick? And sometimes people say, well, you know, Navionics isn't always, you know, accurate. And it's like, well, Mm -hmm. I would say all of them are not always accurate there. You have different fluctuations happening basically in every body of water. You have a dry year, you have a year with a lot of rain, what have you. But what it's going to do is it's going to get you really close. And um, once once you get close, you know, you can, pop around with your own sonar and kind of figure things out. But uh, just being able to see the different structure changes and being able to see that on your phone, especially later in the year, if you're driving around a lake on your truck and you don't have, you know, maybe you've got a GPS on your fish, on your fish locator, on your sonar, um, you know, just having it handy on your phone, whether you're driving around your truck or your four wheeler snowmobile, it, it is really nice to have that. Um, how about though? So Navionics was bought by Garmin, so they own it, but Garmin yeah. also has another app as well. Yeah. So they have one called active captain. And if you're a Garmin user, like definitely this is kind of the one that you'd want to lean towards a lot more. Um, it, it pairs up directly with a Garmin device. So if you own a Garmin, whether it's an open water unit, an ice unit, it makes sense to use active captain versus Navionics maps essentially are exactly the same. Um, you, cause Garmin now owns Navionics. All of those maps are going to be the same, both places. Um, it just is a little bit different look and feel kind of overall the way, um, the apps look, um, in terms of, you know, functionality, I guess, but overall they're very, very similar. Um, but if you have a Garmin, definitely the way to go is with active captain. Um, on a similar note, if you have a hummingbird, you want to go to fish smart. That's basically does very similar thing to Active Captain, and it links um, to your to your Hummingbird unit. And with both of those, um, the advantage is that your waypoints you put on your um, on your unit itself will show up on your phone, and vice versa. You can plan out tracks. Um, there's a whole bunch of advantages to having one of these two apps if you have one of those specific units. Um, and both apps are free. But you can get um, through that the Garmin Active Captain. You can buy a it's like 150 bucks, and you can buy basically all the the lake maps that you'd have on Navionics. Um, but it's just a one-time fee. And then with Fish Smart, the way that they do it, the Hummingbird app is that you buy individual lakes. So if you want maybe just a specific lake, maybe you don't have it on Navionics or your Garmin app, you could go buy that one specific map, which is kind of a nice feature as well. Yeah, if you're the type of person that likes to check out a lot of different lakes, the Fish Smart app could get pretty expensive. But, you know, in my case, I have both because Mm -hmm. there are a few lakes that I like to fish that there's no Navionics data. And that's what I really like because there's no Navionics data. That guy sitting in his easy chair trying to scout out the next great spot just thinks my favorite lake is a mud puddle. As far as I'm concerned, it can stay that way. But yep. uh, that's just something to, to kind of keep in mind is that the Fish Smart app sells uh, its data basically by the lake. So 
you know, if you're only going to fish a certain lake and that's the lake that you want to fish, maybe you've got a cabin on that lake or maybe you just like going there. Fish Smart app probably will work out pretty well for you. The data, at least in my case, seems to be a little bit better, mm-hmm. but it is more expensive because you're paying by the lake. Yeah. And the other thing is like, if you are somebody who's, like you said, if you're a guy who's fishing one specific lake, like I can think of a few bigger lakes that I fish um, across the Midwest. I use all of them because there's little differences on those maps, like things that you don't see on Navionics, you might see on Fish Smart and something you don't see on Fish Smart, you might see on the Garmin app. So it's, if it's a lake, I'm going to fish a lot, or, you know, I really am serious about what I'm doing. I'm just going to buy all of them. I mean, for, for that specific application, I'm not going to go buy, you know, 400 lakes on the, the Humminbird Fish Smart app, but if it's a very specific situation, I definitely will. Yeah. I mean, if you've got Blake Tollison money, why not? <laughs> <laughs> if you've got Chris Larson money, you already got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, let's talk about, speaking of money, let's talk about tournaments here, you know, in, in an app that, uh, we used at catch cover, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago, we ran a tournament. It's Fish Donkey. Tell us a little about Fish Donkey. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're somebody who's competitive, you want to, you know, set up an online tournament, Fish Donkey, that's kind of the place for you. Um, it's super, super user friendly. Basically, it's kind of one of the, the hottest new fishing related apps, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe you have buddies that live in Minnesota, you live in Wisconsin, uh, you guys want to do a tournament on a weekend. You can set it up so that you're all participating in this tournament. Um, you don't have to be in the same area. So it, it's a really cool tool. Um, there's, you know, they do a lot of different tournaments. Like they, they'll they have like influencers on there. So if you want to compete with maybe your favorite influencer or fishing celebrity, um, you have that opportunity to do that as well. But it's just a, a great way to kind of make things competitive if that's what you're into. Yeah, and and the nice thing is it doesn't matter how many weights you stuff down the gullet of that fish and fish donkey, (laughs) it it goes by length. Yes. Yeah, so all the fish by length, and uh, you know, they have approved and unapproved bump boards. You have to take a picture a certain way. And really, I I think it's one of those things that that you know that type of tournament is probably what we're gonna see in the future. Yeah, it's I I think it's a great great way to do it, and it's it opens it up because there's a lot of times where um, you might not be able to travel to a specific body of water to fish a tournament, but if you want to set something up or there's something that's already been set up, you can participate in that just fishing your local lakes. Um, it just opens you know tournament fishing up to a lot more anglers. Yeah, I remember during COVID, uh, the Wisconsin High School Ice Fishing League they did their championship on fish donkey so that people could fish on their home lake Mm -hmm. uh, during the championship. So that was pretty cool. It kind of helped facilitate that in a situation where people couldn't get together. So they, they did it that way. Yeah. That's great. Great tool. Yeah. How about, uh, so speaking of tools, um, my name is Chris Larson. No, speaking of tools, (laughs) we've got one other app we want to talk about and that's uh, fishing knot. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, think about the times you've been on the ice. There's different situations where you need to tie, you know, different lures on, especially if you're using different types of line, uh, different types of lures. Having an app like Fishing Knots basically gives you kind of the step-by-step or play-by-play of how to tie a specific knot. Um, Obviously, you know, we all have our favorite knots we use all the time, like whether it's a fisherman's knot or whatever, but there's certain situations where you might want to tie a loop knot, um, or a polymer knot. And if you haven't tied those or you're not familiar with those, it's a great way to, to learn how to do that. Um, or if you just want to spend time at home practicing those so you know how to do it when you get to the ice, uh, it's a great tool for that as well. Yeah, that loop knot. When's a good time to use a loop knot? So for me personally, when I use that, um, like I'm using uh, our friend Scott Wilhelm, he, he ties up these uh, little hair jigs. Um, and it's a great way to to do that so a lot of times it's more vertical presentations and basically what that does is it just kind of gives it more action when it's swinging i don't use a loop knot a ton but if i do it's in like a, a very specific vertical presentation uh, not really a spoon but like a a vertical jig situation it's my favorite knot yeah it's i, I know people that use it a lot um i use uh <clears throat> obviously fisherman's clinch knot most of the time 
Um, I will tie snail knots on all my tungsten jigs just because it keeps it perfectly horizontal all the time. Um, but and then there's those situations with some of these vertical presentations where I'm relying on a loop knot. Yeah, it's my favorite knot. And if you're looking for a video on how to learn how to tie a good loop knot for fishing, go on YouTube and type in best knot for crappie fishing. You're going to find this guy from down south and his hands look horrible. He said he worked in construction his whole life. His hands are all, they're pretty rough looking. But, uh, you know, maybe he's just a simple guy, so that made it easy for me to learn. But go to YouTube, and uh, that's another great resource, the YouTube app. Uh, go on it there, is. you're going to learn a lot about fishing. You're going to learn a lot about tying knots, whatever you need to learn about. I Actually, my neighbor, he fixed his snowblower the other day on YouTube. And he learned how to clean a carburetor, never knew how to do it. Went on YouTube, clean the carburetor and a snowblower. works great now. So the YouTube yeah, app did. is another one. It is. I just used it to uh, put a new recoil on my snowmobile the other day. So it's a very, very handy tool. Very handy tool. Blake, good to have you again on the show once again. I really appreciate you coming on with me every week or trying to be every week anyway. it's uh, It's been busy here the last few weeks. We've been out doing some fishing and doing different things. But uh, appreciate you coming on with me and and helping keeping the show going. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We're going to talk to you next time.